welcome back to Dark Souls 3 with myself hello how's it going guys it's been a minute been about a week thanks for joining me again today we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be performing the RP of Black Iron Tarkus we're wearing the Black Knight set it looks fantastic we have a couple of uh, different armor pieces to, to fill it out to really make it look good. I don't usually play burly characters. We have a burly upper body here and I usually play like a really thin dude because I like to, I don't know, I kind of like to, it's not RP but I kind of like to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm a thin guy. I could do this because I'm playing as a thin guy, you know? <laughs> it's that Bloodborne. That, dude, I loved it in Bloodborne. Bloodborne was like, oh, dude, I could totally be a hunter. Because I'm tall and thin like these guys. And they're doing all this shit, right? Then again, I'd probably have to like ram like a blood vial into my thigh about 16,000 times to stay alive. Fuck that. Fuck that. Hello, we never finished our conversation last time. Just want to have a quick look at you there. So she sat on, uh, on a table. A bit weird. Got a long like cloak. What's going on with your, uh, your headpiece there? Are you like a firekeeper? Is that what that is? She's doing something with the table. She's like scrolling on it. There's like a little indentation, but there's nothing there. She's not holding anything. It's like she's just trying to, I don't know, feel the table or something. Hello. It is good. When this is done, may I return? The door is open thanks to thee. So she was entrapped here by the man we defeated last time with his cool ass sword that we will read the description of. Tis good. I'll head off to paint. I promised Uncle Gail I would. And there you go. Yeah, so she was a prisoner and she is a painter. Now, we found a fuck ton of paintings recently uh, up in that big building. The uh, archives or whatever it's referred to as. And there a woman telling us to leave. And there was like a billion paintings in there and most of them were of that woman. Could it be that this girl here... She paints, and those are her paintings. And that she was just sat there going, all right, well, what am I going to paint today? Uh, I guess I'll paint that woman, because it's, like, the only thing fucking here, except for, like, I don't know, a door. And if she's a prisoner, like, they keep her entrapped and stuff and closed in, she probably doesn't even get to look outside. Maybe that room that we climbed up into with the, with the blank painting, you know, that we think about taking fire to, uh... Maybe that was where she was basically trapped, where she was imprisoned originally. And then she was brought here when the Ashen one showed up. Me, because they're like, oh no, prophecy or something, maybe. Um, yeah. I, I, I like that idea. Tis good. When this is done, may I return. The door is open thanks to thee. Sims legit, seems to be the case. Alright, so she's going to go back. Um, now that I've freed her. The Onyx Blade. Elfrida, the eldest amongst her sisters, and leader of the Sable Church, bestowest this sword to her knight. Only, the sword was a farewell gift, and acceptance signified the knight's resignation from Elfrida's service. It has the Black Flame, which will enreef blade with black flame, born of the similarly hued flame that sh smolders within her. Oh. Okay, well, um, this is her flame. It's some kind of, she's got some kind of, oh god, look at that sword though, wow! Uh, she has some kind of black flame in her and it's been imbued in here. Uh, I won't be able to see the effects, sadly, because I don't have the requirements. It's a cool ass animation though. Just imagine the blade sets itself on black fire. Oh god, I really like how that looks, like, the black and gold. You can't go wrong with black and gold, guys. You just fucking can't. It's got that Claymore moveset. This is a fantastic weapon. We used a Walner's Blade that has this exact moveset in the original blade playthrough. This is a wonderful weapon. Alright, so she's actually the eldest among her sisters and the leader of the Sable Church to bestow the sword to her knight, right? So, we know of three sisters who ran the Sable Church. One of them, Yuria, manipulated us and made us become the Lord of Hollows, right, in our original ending. And we did actually see a second sister there that was identical. They were twins. But there is a third sister. And as far as I'm aware, that's this lady here, the painter. Hi, guys. 
Post commentary holo here. This is a blind playthrough, and I wasn't able to piece together the correct information in this moment because I'd not learned the full story. The guy with the black sword, Wilhelm, he actually referred to Elfrida in the, his like dying moment, and we immediately encountered this woman after that. That doesn't necessarily mean it's her. In this moment, I thought maybe it could be, maybe it couldn't be. If this is her, then let's follow this train of thought. But in conclusion, it's not this chick who's the painter. It's a different person. And I know that you don't need to freak out in the comments. Which confuses me. Now, the reason I say that's her is because a uh, lovely fellow down here that we had to fight, he referred to her as this third daughter, as Elfrida. Elfridi. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Honestly, I think Elfridi is, I think, correct but it feels wrong in my mouth and it pisses me off and I just prefer to say Elfried. That's why I'm doing that. Either way, if that is her, she seems pretty nice. Like, very unlike the other two sisters who are, you know, all about that manipulation, all about that creation of the uh, Lord of Hollows and that whole storyline and whatnot, which confuses me because, well, why is, why is she so different? Um, I suppose if it's not her, and I'm thinking of it wrong, maybe I'm remembering wrong, right? It could be the case that, uh, you know, I am remembering wrong. It's the woman up there in the archives. That could be the third sister. But I'm pretty sure it's the woman with the white hair there that's painting. Um, which is, uh, interesting. And I, I'm looking forward to, you know, learning more and whatnot. And here we are, where we've, where we've got to pretty much. Here's the Bell of Awakening that... I mean, it could not be a Bell of Awakening. It looks like it's a bell in this tower here that's not there anymore. But it does fucking look like a Bell of Awakening to me. I can hear some footsteps up and to my right. So we have potentially an ambush here. This is where we learned last time we kind of cleared it out. And there was an item hidden up there. You see the path there. There's quite a lot going on here. We've kind of gone in a, a lot of different directions. We've discovered quite a lot. So this is where I think the ambush is because I can hear some footsteps on the right. If I... Uh, there's no right decision. I don't know where what's going to come. Let's just make a choice and go with it. Alright, so... I'm worried that... Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of spears thrown at me. Just generally in this whole area. So I'm kind of looking behind me and up. Like, look how high up that goes. There could easily be someone right there with a spear. And we know these guys travel and work in a pack. You know, they never... They're never really alone. That's why I'm uh, I'm being so extra cautious. Oh, Jesus Christ. So this uh, tree we were looking at before, look at it. Oh, my God. That's so honestly gross. Why does that... Oh. <laughs> oh, man, I haven't seen that effect in ages. At least not that I can remember. I remember first doing that in Dark Souls 2 in the beginning area. I thought that was a nice little neat mechanic. Oh, alright. Well, we've got a shortcut now. That's pretty cool. Which means he's probably supposed to return to the bonfire. But let's be honest. Coward's way to do it. Coward's way to do it. Ain't no coward. Um, and I got plenty of flasks left. So I heard some sounds on my left. Let's go this way. This looks cool. Just keep moving. Alright, I can see... An archer across the way there. Very hidden, right? He's a problem, right? So this means we're in an area that we have to run pretty quick. We see an enemy here. Oh, dude, if I'd gone the other way, this way, I think I would be fucking surrounded by... I'm still surrounded, but... Right, so i got a big motherfucker there. Doesn't seem to be much to that platform, so we just quietly walk past. But yeah, what I was trying to say with the tree is, uh, I don't know why, but the, the way that it was rotting and being destroyed, something about it disgusted me. Um, and it kind of reminds you, oh, look at that. There's another tree just like that. Disgusting, you can kick that, can't you? Alright, well, as long as I'm quiet about it, no one notices I'm here. We have a drop down on the right there, don't think it matters. Um, no one's noticed me yet. Quite a big drop there. We'll take a bit of damage. Could do it, though. It's just this huge fucking area here with this big-ass tree in it. There, you see that? It seems like Ambush City. And I'm like, how do I how do I progress through here? I just go in and I get fucked. Looks like the only way I can see is this way. Down here below me. But there's nothing there. 
just a, a path. All right, well, we may as well make a choice, make some progress, and I'm going to make that choice and go down here. We already hear some movement from uh, potentially these knights. Ah, look, he dropped down. In reaction to me entering the area, as it were, he activated. Right, so I may have done this somewhat cleverly. We have this uh, side route here. This is where that tree was. So that you, if you could get up here, it's quite a shortcut. Ah, fuck. Right, so I have to go through. Fuck! Okay, no choice. We we made the decision. We, we follow through. We follow through. Come here. Remember, there's an archer off. Fuck! Okay, not interesting. There's uh, quite a lot going on here. Oh, I'm just trying to grab what I can. You know, as quick as possible. Get a heal going. Looks like a cave? He whoa, whoa! Move, 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 move. Oh, oh. Okay, we got a cave. We got an item here. Earth Seeker. We found the, the axe that that guy is literally using. Earth Seeker. It had this like rumbling ground effect. Oh, Jesus Christ. A bit awkward there. I was going for the backstab and he had his back to a wall. Look at that. Wow. Whoa, whoa. Okay, don't let him do that. Note to self. Don't let him do that. This is fine. I'm just playing it safe. I'm playing it patient. Getting a hit in every now and then. Then going for the backstab. There we go. All right. Power attack to follow up. He's got a lot of health. We, we managed to stagger him. He's swinging, but I'm outranging it. A few dodges here. Backstab again. Here comes the second one. Just as I finish this one. Last Titan Night Shard. All right. Okay, so it was good that we went in there just because of the cover. That axe looked fantastic, though. The way that it, like smashed the ground and had like actual effects on the land. It requires 15 faith to use, that's interesting. This large twin bladed axe forged with bronze is a ceremonial blade, or weapon even, normally used in sacred rites. Millwood is a land of primitive earth worship where chieftain knights served as the high priests. Vikings dude, working Vikings. And the movie was using called Earthen Wrath. First weapon into earth with a prayer to trigger explosive tremors. It was causing a fucking earthquake. That is cool as fuck. All right, let's just take some quick 1v1s here. You know, don't engage them all at once. That'd be like fucking certain death. Bring them into the cover of the cave where the archers can't help them. And uh, just uh, get rid of them. Just give him a kick. That was supposed to be a kick. Dark Souls and your kicking mechanics. Dreadful. Another kick. There we go. He's a little bit squishier than the guy with the, the dual wax thing. Earth Seeker. Yeah, but, you know, having said that, he still packs a fucking wallop, doesn't he? I was scoping that he would put his shield up. There we go. There's his shield. Ooh. Jesus, you are honestly so fucking scary. I really, really enjoy fighting the Millwood Knights, and I, I really like their lore so far. It's really interesting. I just, re I just really enjoy the little lore, the tidbits of lore, like the followers and the Millwood Knights. I've mentioned it before. And I know that they're not particularly, like, deep lore, right? They're, they don't seem to be massive and expansive or anything like that, but... There's something about it that I just, uh, I appreciate. Look at that from my, uh, falling attack I did earlier. Here's one falling attack I made earlier. But yeah, there's something about them that I just really enjoy. You know, they don't have to have a massive, wide, expansive lore to be interesting. They just need to be interesting. That's all it needs. It doesn't have to be massive. Now, I'm not saying it should be like Bloodborne NPCs. You remember that shit? Kind of interesting stories, but much too short. I'm so suspicious of this tree, dude. Like, it's like extra tall. And aren't these guys all about a specific tree? And they're all like circled around it. Maybe they worship it or it reminds them of home. I don't know. 
I got the vibe that I was going to get plunging attack there by an NPC. <sighs> I don't know. Something about it. All right. Let's keep moving. So, I don't know. I guess the only way to progress is this way. Weirdly, I have no idea where to go to go forward. It's unusual for me. We've got some roots there leading down. There's the Colosseum that we can see. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, there's actually an item there. Oh, you can get in the Colosseum Tower thing. Yeah, you can get above where you take the boss fight. Neat. I don't understand. Is there literally nothing to this area? No, no. We know there's more. We know there's more. Look, back at the Bell of Awakening thing there. That's what I'm just calling it now. Uh, I turned right and cleaned that out. Uh, and went down into the pit. Instead of going left, where I can hear followers. We've still got some followers alive here. You are not the only one. I heard some breathing on the right, not just the left. So, if I can take them out before they activate, that's the ideal way to do it. This is the, uh... <gasps> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, thank god I went right instead of left. Oh my god. Oh, this is some fucking good level design. I, I fucking love this. I really like this DLC. I really like this DLC. Oh, that's fucking clever. So, yeah, we've seen that effect before. And that's what activates the arches in the area. So I could have been shot by all the archers at the same time. They weren't actually active until that moment. Oh my god. Fantastic, dude. So interesting. Oh. We've got a dead follower there. I walked over one, so maybe the wolves killed them. I mean, we've not really seen the followers work with the wolves. I think the wolves were with the Vikral guys. And then the followers are like a different faction. I'd be interested to see if the... Um, if they would interact in some way, like if they fought each other, for example, because they're like, you know, they're different factions. Hello. Goodbye. Right, so we have a really tight cliff face here. I can get knocked off the side into the abyss down there. So I'm kind of, you know, watching my back. There's an item I saw earlier. What's this say? Be wary of right. Oh, I'm always wary of every direction, mate. You know, people, uh, I saw a good comment. Um, it was like maybe their first time watching me play Dark Souls. Oh, nice try, guy. That that was just barely like a pixel off me. Oh, we got some more wolves coming. Someone was saying something along the lines of, uh, oh, I now understand why Hollow is so wary of ambushes in every game forever, always. It's because they play Dark Souls. Watch out, pal. You'll hurt someone. What are you doing? I really appreciate, like, the, the, the way that these, these these NPCs move, you know? We said it before, they fucking move, they act like they're wolves. There's one, there's one there. Um, they act like real wolves. I like it. But the fact that I've faced so many dog-type enemies in all of Soulsborne series, there's something that I enjoy about facing these wolves with their, like, advanced AI because... We've seen them work the same every fucking time for so many get up. For so many games now, for in the Soulsborne series, we've seen dogs, and they might be different in their appearance and come in different. Ah, oh, there's the torch. Different sizes, different numbers. You know, uh, we saw a variation of them with the wolf-based beasts in Bloodborne, um, the four-legged ones. But in the end, the dog types all kind of work the same, even with their advanced AI like these wolves. And it means that I'm just, I just know how to deal with them. You just sidestep them and be patient and then punish them when they attack. You don't attack first. You let them, you let them attack you. So we have a torch that's been made an actual weapon here. Fantastic. An offensive torch used by the Farron followers provides light and doubles as a weapon. Some forms of the abyss manifest as pus within the body, treated from ancient times with fire. And it has the skill Breathe Fire, which will spit a combustible fuel across the torch to breathe flame in front sweeping motion. Another one that I can't actually use, it requires intellect and faith to use. So here's the weapon attacks. It seems to function as a straight sword. If we actually have a look at the weapon, it is actually just a straight sword with uh, some kind of canister 
filled with, I guess, gas of some kind at the end of it. Very neat. Simple idea, but yeah. It's a straight sword, but a bit of a heavy one. There you go. It's a heavy one. Same move set as an original torch. And the special effect, which I... Oh, I can use it. Despite not having the stats, it probably does no damage. That looks fucking cool. Very neat. Really like that. And that's kind of how I feel about all the weapons. We have this weapon here, you know, the, the torch. It's old designs, old styles of gameplay. Just like the wolves we were just mentioning, talking about. In the core of them, it's that old, tried and tested and true thing that we know, right? But there's something different and improved and changed about it. Something new to enjoy and appreciate. We've seen torches in the games for ages. We've seen straight swords, right? But we've never been able to actually use them in that way. And the way that we've seen swords and shields in all of the games. But we've never been able to use them quite like this. That axe that causes the earth tremors. We've seen similar effects, but not quite like that. The charging axe has a new vert, like a new style of special attack. Sure, it has the charge, but the follow-up power attack's brand new. There's a lot that's good with this DLC. But there's a lot of little, small... Oh. Improvements. That I'm really, really enjoying. Alright, fun fact. This guy's got red eyes, so he knows a special enemy. And his uh, bow that he's firing the arrows... They're having some kind of earthquake tremor effect. Have a watch, right? Look at the arrow. The circles around it. And then it explodes after a moment. Like the axe. Like that fucking mace that he uses here. It has an explosion effect. They seem to be able to do some kind of, not miracle, but spell effect of some kind that is allowing them to manipulate the earth in some way. They have it connections to the earth. Really cool. Watch out. I'm looking for the earthquake effects. You know, every time he slams the weapon down, I'm always looking. I'm like, I'm checking when's that earthquake effect going to happen, but never happened there. Ah! Ha ha! There it is, Quake Stone Hammer! There it is. A stone hammer wielded by Millwood Knights with a head of naturally formed stone. I did say it looked like a stick with a fucking bit of rock on it. The Knights of the Millwood would fight hand in hand with the earth itself. Yeah, dude! We got that from just watching them fight. Oh, that's so neat. And this weapon, among the oldest in all of Millwood, makes sense, it's the most primitive, is symbolic of that relationship. You're right. I was just talking about that. Quake, burrow hammerhead into the ground with a great slam and use a strong attack to upheave Earth, creating a shockwave that rumbles like a mighty war cry. Look how badass that looks. It's just fucking deadly. The actual weapon itself, quite simple like the, the stick you know that that part honestly looks quite well made and refined and then the earth is just a bit of fucking rock so it's your standard heavy hammer hitting right power attack very cool but then <laughs> oh i can actually use this weapon I have the stats required. No, no. Okay, 40 strength, but it's because I'm two-handing it because I have uh, 30 strength. Simple and fun. I really like that. I really like that. Oh, God. And uh, I just I just appreciate from software, man. I just fucking do. It's like they have such good character and, and uh, fighting and level design, all that, right? But it's the fact that I can learn bits of information. Look at this. I can learn bits of information from just playing the game and progressing through it. Watch out, that nearly hit me. 
I can just play, look at what's happening around me, look at the, the NPCs and the people I'm actually encountering, and learn so much, and actually piece together the lore without having it told to me. And even though they don't necessarily tell you the law straight up in your face, you know? It's all there for you to enjoy, if you're willing to pay attention. Whoever it was who commented and said, uh, Hello, don't worry, you actually have a bit more of the DLC left. You don't need to worry about forcing yourself to progress. Um, thank you, because it actually made an impact. Like, I felt this weird pressure last time to keep going, and that's why I actually went past the NPC, the woman that we were going to talk to. Because I was like, oh, this must be the end of the DLC. Everyone's telling me the DLC is so short. Everyone's warning me it just ends so suddenly. And it's like, I was scared that if I spoke to her, the DLC would end, and I just wanted to have a look around before that. I didn't really want to keep going and ignore the woman, but I was worried that that was going to be the end of the DLC. So thank you for you guys, um, you know being understanding of that. I know some people thought I was being impulsive last time, but what can you do? Thank you so much for that comment. It helped me just relax and enjoy the DLC more in this episode. I'll be back with the next episode. I maybe assume final episode next time. And I will say now that yes, there was a weak gap. There won't be on the next episode. Thanks for watching. I've been Hollow. You've been you. This has been a fantastic Oh, a little Dark Souls experience. I missed it. A week not playing Dark Souls. Horrendous. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye! Goodbye.